path forward together to challenge ourselves to be better. I'll now turn it over to Superintendent Canty for our land acknowledgements as we continue through tonight's program. Thank you, Chair Higgison. And for, to all of our trustees uh, for your commitment to this strategy and for your leadership and resolve as we implement its recommendations. Before I read the land acknowledgements, I also want to thank Madeline McEachran and Scott Scanlonbury, our communications team, as well as Kim Garno, my executive assistant for the behind the scenes technical work and planning for this event. We would have loved to be in person, but due to COVID, we had to pivot to a Teams live event, which has been no small feat. Thank you, Madeline, Scott, and Kim. Now to our Greater Essex Land Acknowledgement. We acknowledge that we are on land surrounded by water, originally inhabited by Indigenous peoples who have traveled this area since time immemorial. This, ter uh, this territory is within the lands honored by the Wampum Treaties, agreements between the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, the Lene Lenape, and the Allied Nations to peacefully share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. Specifically, we'd like to acknowledge the presence of the Three Fires Confederacy, the Odawa, the Ojibwe, the Potawatomi, the Huron-Wendat peoples. We are dedicated to honoring Indigenous history and culture while remaining committed to moving forward respectfully with all First Nation, Inuit, and Métis. And now the Afrocentric land acknowledgement, adapted from Blackness Between Us Collective, Ashara and Ashai. The land was stolen from Indigenous peoples and enslaved Africans were brought en masse to these uh, cities. This is occupied Indigenous territories of many nations, and these cities were built with stolen African labor and resources. One cannot be remembered without the other. We invite you into a tradition with us of acknowledging and remembering whose territory you are on, whether you are in the Americas, from the North to the Caribbean to the South, and also remembering and acknowledging that these countries were built with stolen African and black labor and resources as well. I want to thank the Black Council of Windsor Essex for providing us with this Afrocentric land acknowledgement. It is included as part of the fabric of this document in thanks to their advocacy, along with the Black Women of Forward Action, invested in active community members, parents, students and staff who worked to make this strategy a reality. It's the year 2022, and we're finally launching a dismantling anti-Black racism strategy in our board. In no small thanks to the next person, I would like to introduce our Director of Education, Director Aaron Kelly. Aaron. Thank you, Josh. It's my pleasure at this time to introduce Tana Turner. Uh, Tana Turner is the principal of Turner Consulting Group, which was retained to assist us with the development of our dismantling anti-Black racism strategy. Tana has more than three decades of experience in the fields of equity, diversity and inclusion and is an experienced researcher. Over the course of her career, she has worked on a number of important projects to help organizations understand how anti-Black racism manifests itself and to work for systemic change. That included a similar dismantling anti-Black racism strategy for the York Region District School Board. Tana's vast knowledge and experience, especially her analytical expertise, was vital to our effort. She's also developed and delivered during her career human rights and unconscious bias training, program reviews, and gender equity analysis. The hiring of the Turning Consulting Group gave our initiative a strong foundation, and her professional success gives us great hope that this dismantling anti-Black racism strategy will serve its intended purpose. It's my pleasure to introduce Tana Turner to provide us with an overview of the documents we are sharing today and some of the work that went into their creation. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Director Kelly. Um, certainly it was my pleasure to work with my colleague Yvette Barnes uh, and the Black community in Windsor and Essex County students, parents, and board staff on this important work. Um, what I want to do right now is to introduce you to the strategy, talk a bit about the process and how we got to um, develop the strategy, and um, certainly reflect on what we heard from the consultations and how that learning is reflected in the five priority areas of the strategy. Thank you. 
So the strategy was developed um, as um, was previously mentioned under the direction and guidance of the Anti-Black Racism Steering Committee. And that committee really uh, represented a good cross section of students, parents, community members, community organizations and school board staff. And certainly while there is a great deal of research into anti-Black racism in education, the steering committee felt that it was important to hold consultations to hear directly from members of the Greater Essex County School Board um, and the school community about issues specific to the board and specific to this community. So um, a working group was um, struck, which comprised of um, members of the steering committee, and they worked more closely with myself and my colleague to guide the development of the strategy. And under their guidance, we consulted with students, staff, and um, a number of members of the Greater Essex County School community. And that was through an online survey, which was used to gather a range of input um, from student staff in the community. And in total, 603 people participated in that survey. Um, we did hold a series of small group conversations um, to hear um, um, or to engage in conversation about what the issues are, what people's perspectives were with respect to anti-Black racism and certainly their experiences um, at the school board. Um, so in total, almost 700 people participated in the consultations and provided input into the uh, development of the strategy. And certainly it was hearten heartening to um, hear um, the experiences of um, and the perspectives of both Black and non-Black community members who were, um, you know, shared a really deep understanding of the issues of anti-Black racism and also a deep commitment to engaging in the work of dismantling anti-Black racism. And the strategy consists of two documents, which I will walk you through. And the first is the background report. And the background report is important because it will help all members of the school community understand um, what anti-Black racism is and how it manifests not only within Ontario's public school system generally, but also specifically within the Greater Essex County District School Board itself. And the report documents um, the process for developing the strategy and then summarizes our findings from the consultations. And the background report really is an important part of this strategy because it will help, um, help folks um, really generate the needed understanding um, in order to engage in the uh, implementation of the strategy. To change the system to better support and serve Black students, um, trustees, school leaders, educators, and others in the school community must understand the issues and certainly why change is needed. And we've also incorporated quotes from the consultation participants in the report so that you can hear directly from them about their experiences. And it's important to note that we did hear from people who thought that um, there were no issues that uh, the school system had to address and that anti-Black racism really didn't exist. Um, they thought that the issues that Black students faced were actually coming from the Black students themselves and from their families and communities. And they didn't feel that a strategy was necessary. Um, and certainly there is a great deal of research that shows that um, um, there are issues within education and that um, there is a need for school systems to directly address issues of anti-Black racism. But we felt that, um, you know, based on some of that feedback, that it was important to include a background report to accompany the strategy in order to disrupt the narrative 
that um, the outcomes that black students are facing are the result of deficiencies of black children or their families and really shine a light on the system itself and what um, is happening within the education system to produce these outcomes. So I encourage you all to um, read the report and it um, and reflect on it because it will help you understand why change is needed and what change is needed. The strategy also includes a historical perspective of anti-Black racism in education in the region. And I thank historian Natasha Henry for writing this section of the report. Um, and we included this in the report for two reasons. First, through the consultations, as I said, it's clear that not everybody understands how we got here. They wanted to blame Black students and their families for the shortcomings of the education system. Um, but the issues that we see today really reflect ongoing um, and certainly a long history in Ontario of anti-Black racism in education. And we hope that understanding the history will help people understand that these issues are systemic and deeply embedded within the school system itself. And while most of us know that there were segregated schools in the U.S., many don't know that there were also segregated schools here in Ontario and in this region. Egerton Ryerson passed legislation in 1850 that allowed for segregated schools based on race. And this legislation actually remained until 1964. And the last separate school in Ontario was closed in 1965, and it was in Colchester. So this section highlights that Black students have experienced a long history of anti-Black racism, and Black parents and communities have been advocating for equity in education for longer than Canada has been a country. The advocacy that the Black community is engaged in is really a continuation of this long history. And I commend the community for their persistence and diligence um, that has gotten us this far and certainly will be needed in the years ahead as the board um, starts to implement the strategy. And the background report um, summarizes what we heard through the consultations. Um, black and non-Black students, parents, community members, and staff shared their perceptions and experiences uh, with respect to anti-Black racism at the board. And these experiences are really all the more jarring um, because they are so different from the board's stated values of providing quality education for all students and its commitment to human rights. And what we heard from the, from the consultations told us that while the education system does a, a good job overall of educating students, um, certainly it's falling short when it comes to Black students. Um, and Black students and parents shared a deep commitment to education, high hopes for completing high school and pursuing their goals and ambitions. But despite this commitment, they also shared that they experienced roadblocks and barriers to their success. Um, so they shared um, experiences of stereotypes um, that get in the way of teachers and school administrators seeing them as capable of learning. They shared that the racism of low expectations means that teachers don't engage with them, don't give them challenging work, and don't support their learning. Black students also shared that they experienced racism from other students, from teachers, from school administrators, that makes them feel devalued and unwelcomed at school. And they feel that, that their issues are ignored or that they're punished when they raise concerns about these experiences. Black students and parents also shared that despite a long and rich history of Black people within Canada and in this region, the curriculum fails to include Black people. 
Black students who are also Muslim share their experiences of not only facing anti-Black racism, but also Islamophobia. And Black parents shared how challenging it is uh, to understand and navigate the school system. We also explored the issues that Black staff experience, um, and this uh, for two reasons in particular. First, um, all employers um, have a legal obligation to ensure that they're not discriminating in their hiring and selection process, and that employees don't harass um, or don't experience harassment and discrimination in the workplace. And secondly, we know from re many research studies that Black teachers are important to the success of students, and not only Black students, but also to non-Black students. And if we are to tackle anti-Black racism, it's important that all students see Black people in positions of leadership. Um, through the consultations, um, Black staff shared their commitment to teaching and the joy of teaching all children, um, even during these challenging times. But we heard from them that there are very few Black teachers, Black staff at the Greater Essex County District School Board, that they feel isolated and unwelcomed in their workplaces. And in fact, um, a number of people shared that uh, they know of recent Black graduates from Teachers College that actually have to move out of the region in order to find work because they can't find a job within the region. We also heard from Black teachers and staff that their skills and abilities and qualifications um, aren't fully recognized. And when issues of racism do occur, they don't feel that the issues are appropriately handled. So there's clearly much work to do with respect to hiring more Black staff and supporting their inclusion and success at the Greater Essex County District School Board. The second document is the strategy itself, which aims to address the issues that were identified through the consultations. And the strategy aims to help the board really meet the promise of education for all students. Ontario's education system is actually one of the best in the world. Um, delegations from around the world come to Ontario school boards to learn what it is we're doing right. And certainly we do a good job of educating students, but it doesn't extend necessarily to all students. And addressing anti-Black racism will ensure that, um, you know, our education system truly is the best and, and the best for all of our children. The strategy document includes foundational principles, uh, along with the five priority areas and the many actions within each priority. It also provides an accountability framework and measures of progress um, which really were critical elements that many community members and staff wanted included in the strategy. And our goal in developing the strategy, developing the strategy was really to create a blueprint for the journey ahead for the board. And we recognize that there will be adjustments made along the way, but certainly it, it really will be the guide for the way forward for the board. Um, the first priority addresses the need for senior leaders to deepen their understanding of the issues and to boldly lead the implementation of the strategy. Priority two is about fostering Black affirming and anti-racist learning and working environments. And this includes that um, ensuring that Black students see themselves reflected in the curriculum and that the rich history of Windsor and Essex County is brought into the classrooms and brought into the classrooms every day, not just in February. And this also means strengthening the capacity of teachers 
to engage in culturally responsive pedagogy and creating a safe and welcoming learning environment um, for students and a safe and welcoming working environment uh, for staff and addressing issues of anti-Black racism when they do occur. Priority three focuses on improving the ways in which Black parents and communities are engaged. And this includes developing a community engagement framework to ensure that all communities, including the Black community, are consulted and engaged. And also providing more, uh, additional information and resources to Black parents about the education system and letting them know who they can contact um, should they have issues. Priority four is about inspiring and supporting Black student success to ensure that they have the supports they, they need to do well academically, but also supports for their well-being. And this priority includes actions to end streaming, um, which we know for some students begin in kindergarten. And priority five is about hiring and supporting the well-being, inclusion and success of Black staff. So this is a five-year strategy and certainly it will need to be thoughtfully um, implemented. Um, we want the the implementation not just to be about um, checking boxes and doing the activities, but really making deep um, change within the board. Um, and certainly that all staff see this not as optional add-ons, but necessary changes that get baked into everything that they do. And certainly by implementing the strategy, um, it will strengthen the board's focus not only on Black students, but also um, on other students that the system has been underserving. Um, the issues raised through the consultations really identifies the need for the board to make a real and sustained commitment um, and certain commitment to change. And certainly we, we think that um, the strategy um, will, uh, will support that change. I also want to highlight another important element of the strategy, the accountability framework. Students and the community, while they applauded the consultations and the development of the strategy, they wanted some reassurances that the board will fully implement the strategy. And they didn't want the implementation to be left to chance. So to address these concerns, we've included an accountability framework that includes regular check-ins, um, not just internally, but uh, with the community. Um, and that will ensure that the strategy is being implemented as planned and that adjustments are being made along the way to ensure that the strategy is having the intended um, outcomes. And I just want to um, close by leaving you with this quote from James Baldwin. And he said, not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing um, can be changed until it is faced. And the strategy certainly is ambitious and I commend the board for taking on this work and for facing uh, the reality of anti-Black racism within the education system. Um, and to make the changes that we want, it will require bold thinking and bold leadership. And leadership not only from the trustees and senior leaders, but from each employee within their own sphere of influence. And certainly we applaud the many employees who've already been doing the hard work of addressing anti-Black racism. Um, and we welcome um, others who have been on the sidelines um, to join in to this work. Um, certainly in the consultations, they shared their excitement to begin to engage in this work. Um, and certainly we need all employees um, because this is certainly meaningful work 
um, that will change lives, but it is, um, you know, like all important work, it won't be easy and it will require everybody to uh, join in. Um, and certainly the role of community advocacy will continue to be important and um, it will be important for the board to continue to build the relationship with the community because they will um, need to be engaged in order to keep and um, maintain the momentum and ensure that um, the implementation of the strategy remains on track. I hope that the development of the strategy certainly is a catalyst for change to culture, attitudes, policies, and practices, and most importantly, to the outcomes for Black students. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Turner. Um, appreciate the overview of the findings. Uh, tough to hear at times, but uh, important, and we really applaud your work, and we look forward to the learning journey that continues with you. So um, I want to welcome everyone here for joining uh, for this milestone event, because it really is a milestone event. Um, I use the word my milestone intentionally. It's a marker to indicate progress on a journey. Not the beginning, not the end, it's a step along the way, and this strategy outlines a significant step in the right direction. I am pleased with our progress and the collaborative work we have done together, and I want to extend gratitude to the Anti-Black Racism Steering Committee, as well as the organizations and individuals in our communities, our staff, and our students who have encouraged, supported, and guided us to get where we are today. There continues to be a deep commitment from everyone involved in developing and formulating this strategy. Many people have great, shown great strength to share with us their lived experience and their ideas which have informed and inspired our work. I'm also thankful for our team at the school board who have been quick to accept the challenge of learning and unlearning while being reflective and honest with themselves about how our organization has failed to meet the needs of Black students, staff, and their families. As you will see by reading both the strategy and the background document, there are many hard truths to face. Our staff, our students, and our families have been impacted by our inactions and our actions. And on behalf of the board, I apologize to those who have been and continue to be affected by acts of anti-Black racism. We are committed to doing better. Hannah Turner of Turner Consulting was brought in when we embarked on the mission last fall. She's been diligent, vigorous, and efficient in consulting with our school community, compiling that information and preparing the documents that are being shared today. We now have a roadmap that will guide our work to dismantle anti-Black racism over the upcoming five years and the board's strong commitment to implement this strategy. There are a number of concrete and tangible goals we will work towards, such as increasing the number of Black teachers, support workers and administrators, providing regular professional development for all current staff, and eliminating obstacles to success such as streaming, which historically has had negative outcomes for Black students. Implementing this strategy will generate challenging conversations and there will be much hard work ahead. In the fall, we'll, we will be embarking on the collection of student census data that will inform and assist us in exploring the perceptions raised in our consultations. In addition, an employee systems review will be undertaken to identify and help us move any barriers to hiring, advancement and full inclusion in the workplace. These are just two of the important actions that will assist us in moving forward as we undertake this five-year plan. We will continue to work with the Black community and our internal and external partners as we implement the strategy. The University of Windsor and St. Clair College will also be called upon to extend our working relationships to help meet these goals. And I am confident that we can see both short and long-term benefits to partnering to this strategy. And I hope that all members of all the communities in our district will continue to collaborate with us 
as we work to fulfill the important mandates outlined in our dismantling anti-black racism strategy. Your support and guidance are vital. I want to be clear, the work though, it's ours, and we will be accountable to our partners to reach future milestones. We recognize that this journey will not be easy. We will trip along the way, undoubtedly, but it will be not for lack of effort or concern. We are committed to learning from our missteps, making corrections along the way and continuing this difficult, but very important work. The journey is continuous. And that I think is a good thing. It will help us address anti-black racism within our system and help produce better outcomes for black students. But I believe it will also help us create a system that's more responsive to the needs of all of our diverse communities and students. Anti-black racism is an issue in all organizations and they're grappling with it. And we will continue to do our part to evolve and strive for better inclusive and equitable schools. Education can and must be the guiding light. Thank you. Thank you, Director Kelly, for leading this work and for collaborating with the experts from Turner Consulting and our Black community to build and implement our dismantling anti-Black racism strategy, and also with the support of our Board of Trustees. The reason I bring that up, this would not be a virtual event if we didn't have at least one glitch. And I apologize to the chair of the board, uh, Alicia Higgison. Chair Higgison, if you'd be so kind as to come back on and share your 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 talk from the beginning of this uh, feed because it was cut off. We didn't get to hear what you had to say at the beginning and um, we would love to hear what you had to say. I appreciate that. Superintendent Canty, thank you very much. So good evening to all of you and thank you for joining us here this evening. My name is Alicia Higgison. I am the chairperson of the Greater Essex County District School Board. It is my honor to welcome you all here together virtually as we launch this impactful strategy that has been in the making for many months. The Greater Essex County District School Board, in partnership with the Anti-Black Racism Steering Committee and other community partners, is eager to begin the work of implementing the dismantling anti-Black racism strategy we were just introduced to this evening. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I thank with sincerity our partners in this work and recognize that we have arrived at these recommendations in the strategy in consultation with members of the community throughout the nine municipalities in our district, with our staff and administrators throughout the system, and with thanks to Turner Consulting and Ms. Tana Turner for her extensive work in its creation. It is important to note that this is a living document, not a report that sits idly on a shelf. It is indeed a strategy that belongs not just to GECDSB, but whose success involves all of us collectively. The GECDSB Board of Trustees will earnestly review and contribute a degree of accountability to its progress. There will be difficult parts of our reality that we must face. It's only through acknowledging the truth that we can dedicate ourselves to making the changes we know are necessary. When we know better, we can do better. This is brave work. I'm glad we're doing it. I want better for the well being and success of Black students in Greater Essex, and I believe we have a path forward together to challenge ourselves to be better. I'll now turn it back over to Superintendent Canty as we continue with our program this evening. Thank you, Chairperson Higgison uh, and the entire Board of Trustees of your commitment to this strategy, uh, to your leadership and resolve as we implement its recommendations. It's now my honor to introduce our board's human rights and system advisor, uh, and sorry, equity system advisor, Roz Salvador. Roz is an experienced human rights lawyer who's committed to helping Greater Essex develop, implement, and champion equity-minded policies within our board. My colleagues and I have learned so much for Roz in the, in the past few months about inclusivity and human rights, and our system is better because they are a part of it. Tonight, Roz is here to explain the links between human rights and dismantling anti-Black racism. Roz? Thank you. Thank you all for being here with us tonight. 
I would like to express gratitude to everyone whose work and relaying of experiences has created this report, which will be so important in guiding our work moving forward. I also want to take a minute to update you on a few pieces that are currently being worked on. We've been delivering a three and a half hour human rights training for principals, vice principals and superintendents. The training includes understanding the legal obligation under the Human Rights Code to fully address human rights concerns, discussing anti-Black racism, how it intersects with student discipline, dress codes, and school spirit days like Crazy Hair Day. So this is a start, and we know we need to continue to build a human rights learning program with a strong focus on anti-Black racism. Anti-Black racism needs to be addressed and prevented systemically across the board, as well as addressing each situation as it presents. We will soon be seeking feedback from the Anti-Black Racism Advisory Committee and other community groups on a draft school human rights response procedure, focusing on staff obligations to intervene and fully address human rights concerns, including supporting students who've been impacted. We recognize that anti-Black racism is an emergency that needs to be addressed now, and we know we have a lot of work to do to earn the trust of the community. Thank you. Thank you, Roz. And once again, thank you for the work you're doing for all of us here in Greater Essex. Up next, I have the honor of introducing the Black Council of Windsor Essex. I've been asked to introduce the first speaker, Leslie McCurdy, who will in turn introduce Caitlin Ellsworth and Peter Ajay. Before I do, I want to once again publicly thank uh, the Black Council of Windsor Essex for their advocacy for our Black staff and students throughout this strategy process led by Leslie McCurdy. As part of her long standing artistry and advocacy work, Leslie has been bringing Black affirming learning opportunities into our elementary schools and secondary schools for many years. Her plays, The Spirit of Harriet Tubman and Things My Four Sisters Saw, along with the study guides that accompany them, have been appreciated many times over by staff and students in our district. Her play, Harriet is My Hero, which is used in grades kindergarten to grade two, is also on online available throughout the pandemic, but our staff and students cannot wait to have Leslie performing again live as soon as possible. Ms. McCurdy, we welcome you and your colleagues to share your thoughts about our dismantling anti-Black racism strategy. Leslie? Good evening and thank you, Joshua, and thank you everybody who is uh, attending this um, launch this evening. I remember my mom going to my school, creating a path from our house when my siblings and I learned that we were N-words. Um, she went to have books removed from the curriculum that were teaching that black people had to be enslaved because they were backward heathens who needed to be civilized. I remember she went up when a teacher had Valentine's cards for everyone in her classroom except for my little sister. My mother armed us with lessons on black history herself in response to classroom assignments that directed us to describe how our ancestors emigrated from Europe. My mother educating us on our descendancy from freedom seekers and activists. I remember going to my son's school when the teacher said that he looked like a drug dealer in response to the business attire he wore to school for career day or going to ask his vice president to not rain on his dream by telling them that the University of Michigan might be too hard for him and too expensive for his parents to send him to by letting him know that that was my alma mater. And I recall the experience of having my son's grade nine teacher say that my son should be in applied math because he wouldn't do his homework and to have his grade 10 teacher say that he should be in the special math program um, at Massey because he was brilliant at math and not doing his homework because he was bored. And I wondered how many other brilliant black children were being streamed into applied math because they were bored. It is this litany of experiences that I, my son, and countless other black children in our schools have endured that brings us to this moment where finally we are being heard and finally some corrective actions are being taken. It does not escape my notice that this dismantling anti-black racism strategy is being released two years to the day that George Floyd was killed. It was the Black Lives Matter movement that succeeded that, that sort of initiated the creation of the Black Council of Windsor Essex. I figured if Black lives were going to matter to anyone, they had to matter first and foremost to Black people. 
The Black Council of Windsor Essex was formed as an entity where all of the Black organizations and individuals could come together to work for our collective good. It is this collaborative effort that has finally achieved results. I want to give thanks to Black Women of Forward Action for their efforts in um, initiating this effort that has grown into the development of this strategy. I also want to give thanks to our Elders Council, um, made up of my mother, Patricia Neely McCurdy, Clayton Talbert, Scholastic Lianga, Marjorie Rogers, Philip Alexander, and Gaston Franklin, who have been doing this work for a long time. And we employed techniques that, that they had used before and new techniques, building upon their experience to move forward. Members of the Black Council who worked on this strategy include, and in no particular order, the Black Women of Forward Action, as mentioned above, Youth Connection Association, Essex County Black Historical Research Society, Windsor Black Educators Association, Windsor West Indian Association, African Communities of Windsor, Black Canadians for Cultural, Economic and Educational Progress, Family Fuse, Sister to Sister Thinkwise, African Women's Association of Windsor, Common Sense Classrooms, The Hour a Day Study Club, Sierra Leone Community of Windsor, Windsor Burundi Family Reunification Association, Beauty as Me, and other individuals who work within the schools and without to push for this change. It is in the continued spirit of collective cooperation that we look forward to remaining engaged with the Greater Essex County District School Board to collaborate on the implementation of this anti-Black racism strategy so that negative experiences like those that my son, I, and many other Black students, staff, and parents have, have experienced will cease. We at the Black Council of Windsor Essex are grateful and appreciative of the work of Tana Turner, Yvette Barnes, and the Turner Consulting Group in developing this dismantling anti-Black racism strategy. We thank you for shepherding us to this point. We also thank the administration of the Greater Essex County District School Board for the commitment to doing this work of implementing the strategy, and we look forward to continuing to work with you. Finally, as always, I have much love and gratitude for all of the members of the Black community that are committed to the cause of working to eliminate all forms of anti-Black racism in Windsor and Essex County. I thank you all. I love you all. Peace. Um, next, I will introduce Caitlin Ellsworth, who is the chair of the Black Council Education Working Group. Hello everyone, my name is Caitlin Ellsworth and I come before you wearing many hats. I'm the Vice Chair of the Black Council of Windsor Essex, the Chair of the Education Committee of the Black Council. I'm a proud member of the Windsor Black Educators Association and I am honored to stand before you representing Canada's oldest Black woman-led charitable nonprofit organization, the Hour a Day Study Club, among many other organizations. I come to you and I invoke the spirit of the ancestors to, to stand beside us as we speak today. Those living ancestors whose shoulders we stand on that Leslie spoke about, and I raise some of those names up who have passed. Patricia Alexander, Vivian Chavez, Beulah Cousins, Martha Elliott Tolson, Justin Jackson, Shelley Harding Smith, Verlin Ladd, Spurgeon Montague, Abram Shreve, Dr. Henry D. Taylor, Dr. Colin Smith, and the countless who go unnamed. And to them I say thank you, job well done, and ashe. People of African descent have lived in Windsor, Essex since the 18th century. As an underground railroad descendant, my family has been in Windsor, Essex before Canada became a, a country. Black people have yet to be included into the fabric of education in a truly inclusive manner. The legacy of enslavement in Canada and segregated schools has had a lasting effect on education throughout Canada and in Windsor, Essex. The last segregated school in Ontario closed in 1965. SS number 11 in Colchester, Ontario, in which the building still stands, was the last segregated school in Ontario. Let that sink in, in our own region. Some of those ancestors named that, that I named and Leslie named uh, were teachers at SS number 11. Some have passed, a few are still with us. Let that sink in. The legacy of the segregation permeates every brick, every hallway, and every classroom of the Greater Essex County District School Board. In my youth and in my adulthood, education institutes 
institutions are where I have experienced the most anti-Black racism. Called the N-word, assumed I wasn't as smart as other students because of my race, made fun of because of my hair. Anti-Black racism infiltrates every office of every building in these education institutions. As an educator formerly working for this very school board, I can attest that in my adulthood, the school board is where I experienced the most anti-Black racism, blatant, covert, overt, and traumatic anti-Black racism. My qualifications being questioned at every turn, principals questioning my knowledge on educational matters, witnessing Black students targeted for wearing do-rags and told they must be criminal for wearing one or told that they won't be able to get a job if they wear do-rags, experiencing the ripple effect of a black student being tasered in one of the schools I worked at and being reprimanded and gaslit for identifying reporting systemic and interpersonal acts of anti-black racism by the equity inclusion officer, administrators, teachers, principals, and staff, ultimately targeted for all the unapologetic speak, unapologetically speaking out against anti-black racism, pushed out, leading me to take several leaves of absences because of this anti-Black racism, anti-Black Satanism, and misogynoir I was continuously subjected to. These are but a few example, examples, and I know I do not stand alone in my experience as a Black staff member throughout education institutions in Canada. This brings us to why we are here in front of you all today. Decades of advocacy from the Black community of Windsor-Essex County have fallen on ears unwilling to hear or acknowledge the Black community's voices. We are here because of the unceasing and tireless advocacy of the Black Council. Meetings with the Deputy Minister of Education, letters to the school board and trustees, countless hours of advocacy by countless Black community members are why we are here today. This dismantling anti-Black racism report and strategy is a direct tangible result of community groups and members of the Black Council's advocacy. Black staff, Black students, and Black community, the Black community have come to the table on numerous occasions to engage meaningfully with the school board. As once said by Shirley Chisholm, if they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. And the Black community has done just that, demanding a seat at the table. The community bringing, them with, bringing with us a, a wealth of knowledge and experience, um, having been met with superintendents calling our Council of Anti-Black Racism heartwarming stories, and the Black community's attempts uh, at resource sharing met with disregard. Black staff voices have been silenced as referenced in the report by T Turner Consulting Group. Black staff feel unsafe in the schools they work at. Black staff experience a double trauma of experiencing anti-Black racism th themselves and then having to deal with and witness anti-Black racism inflicted on their students. This report gives voice to the Black students' experience. Every recommendation, every quotation is a direct result of Black students and staff speaking up, and we say thank you. All students deserve to learn from Black teachers. All students benefit from learning from Black teachers. Regulation 274 was revoked by the Ministry of Education. This policy program memorandum lays out guidance to principals on hiring based on the unique needs of schools diversity and equity and merit, while also providing protocols to avoid nepotism. Greater Essex is rife with nepotism. This regulation allows the school board to put out meaningful a meaningful aspect of this dismantling anti-Black racism report into action effectively, effective immediately, hire more Black teachers. The double pandemic of anti-Black racism and the global pandemic of COVID-19 magnify the fissures and gaps in supports for Black students and staff at Greater Essex. The time is ripe to act now. We look forward to working with the school board to ensure the implementation of the strategy report reflects the feelings of the Black community. The Black community knows exactly what is best for our community. The Black community will continue to show up. It is time for the school board to recognize this, acknowledge this, and act on it. I would like to thank Tanner Turner and Yvette Barnes for their commitment and professionalism throughout this consultation process and development of this, anti -black, this dismantling anti-Black racism landmark strategy. For many of us, this was the first time we felt heard truly listened to, and we thank you for that. But this work is not done. This is only the beginning. We will continue to pull up our folding chairs, engage meaningfully with the school board, call the school board out when necessary, partnering where possible. We look forward to the implementation phase of the strategy and report. This work is life-changing. This, this work is life-saving. Thank you, and I will now turn it over to my friend, Agojuko EJ. Thank you, Caitlin. And uh, again, good evening, everyone, and thanks for having me. Um, I'm not going to keep you long, but I'm going to uh, uh, attempt to introduce myself to you and uh, tell you from what perspective I'm coming. 
I am currently the um, the uh, chairperson for the African Community Organization of Windsor. Um, that organization I formed in 1989. Um, one of the reasons was be is because of the uh, uh, inequity in the school system and the way that our children were being treated on, uh, or are still being treated in the schools. I uh, sit as the um, the chair of the um, uh, what we call the Diversity and Inclusion Advisory Committee for the City of Windsor. I'm also a member of the Black Council of Windsor Essex, um, which I um, I owe um, a lot of gratitude to. But let me just uh, say very quickly from the uh, uh, continental African perspective that I am very grateful to work with the uh, Windsor Black um, uh, Council because their parents and their foreparents were the ones that laid the background for us and for me to be able to be in Windsor, for me to be able to step into Windsor and be able to sit here and speak with you this evening, is that someone paid the price for me to be able to do so. And I owe uh, all of my respect to that person. The interesting thing is that these people started this fight or uh, this, this uh, 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 matter that we're dealing with today, they started it way back then when um, the black people that were here weren't allowed to attend schools. If they attended schools, they were reprimanded uh, from what I hear. Um, the schools were segregated and, and so forth. Now we come in from the continent of Africa. Now, mind you, um, uh, colonialism uh, did not spare anybody, uh, whether you were on the continent or whether you were in the uh, in the uh, um, uh, slave um, experimental um, uh, nations of um, uh, the USA and or Canada and, and their sister countries. And so, uh, but when we leave home in Africa, we've, we saw all of our teachers or most of our teachers, uh, educators were Africans like us. Uh, many of us came here, uh, not because we wanted to come here, but we came here because uh, we came in as refugees. I didn't come in as a refugee, uh, let me make that clear, but a lot of continental Africans came in here as refugees. They brought their children with them. And on the continent, we trusted the schools to, to leave our children there so that the, the, the teachers there would, would, would uh, teach these children, would, would basically help us bring up these children in, in manners that we thought would be respectful and beneficial to them when they grow up. One of the things that we've come to find coming in here is that um, the system here um, rather put our children down and the system here rather uh, discouraged our children uh, from uh, pursuing uh, academic um, uh, challenges that uh, they, 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 they're uh, uh, qualified for. When we go to counseling, when our children go to counseling at schools, they are directed in the, in the wrong ways. Uh, children do not see people who look like them as educators in their systems. They do not see them as teachers. Um, my daughter, when she was uh, in, in uh, grade school and high school, um, was the only black child in her class and of course uh, didn't have any black teacher at all right through. Um, and so it, it is painful. It is actually painful, and 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 I, I guess I look at it from an economic perspective as well, that we are contributors tax-wise to the money that goes into running these boards of education, and yet um, we are not reflected in it. Uh, the money is not spent on us, and when it's spent on us, it's spent to penalize us rather than rather than encourage us to uh, become um, uh, productive partners within the school systems, and so. One of the things that I'd like to ask um, is that this initiative, because again, uh, let me just digress for a second to thank Tana um, Turner and Yvette Barnes for the work that they that they are, have done and the work that I believe that they're still doing because they've injected certain things into our community now that we must work with. I'd like to um, acknowledge the Black Council of Windsor Essex for its advocacy and for the fact that it put its foot on the pedal to make sure that the school board act, acted. I know that um, uh, we have uh, the steering committee 
um, that was eventually formed. And I think the, the steering committee did a fantastic job in, uh, uh, in getting to this point. But I want to tell you that the Black Women Afford Action and, and the um, Windsor Black um, uh, Council, the Black Council of Windsor Essex, um, is is a, a force to be reckoned with when it comes to the advocacy for education and for our children in this region, and I, I'm very very proud of them. Um, I like to thank the school board for also um, acknowledging the fact that this is necessary work that needs to be done. And my hope is that we can put that energy into getting the work done. Uh, one of the things that I'd like to offer is that uh, from our community, when I say from our community, I'm looking at the ent entirety of the black community. That is the what we call the African, the black and the Caribbean uh, communities that we do have qualified resources, tremendously qualified resources that we will continue to offer the school board to work with as it concerns educating our children and the other children around them so that we could better make our community a very um, a progressive community. Like I said, I don't want to keep you too long. I want to thank everybody that's involved in this process and uh, I want to say let's get up and get us to do whatever you need me to do um, from the Black Council, from the African Community Organization of Windsor of just from a, an individual perspective, I'm willing to be out there to get it done. Thank you very much again this evening for having me and uh, let's see what, where we go from here. Thank you very much, uh, Caitlin, Leslie and Peter uh, for sharing your stories and, and letting us know um, that you are committed uh, to helping us and consulting with us as we move forward with the strategy. I also like to thank Peter um, individually for the music that many maybe didn't get to hear because we were cut off. It wasn't just the chair of the board that was cut off at the beginning, but perhaps the student artwork um, and the music that Peter selected for. So we'll make sure that we play that at the end of the uh, presentation. Our next speaker uh, has been a beacon of hope in our schools for over a decade. Dr. Andrew Allen is the chair of the African Diaspora Youth Conference, an annual event for secondary students who are considering university as a pathway for them after secondary school. Dr. Allen is an associate professor in the Faculty of Education at the University of Windsor and the University Anti-Racism Pedagogy's Teaching Leadership Chair. He is currently the coordinator of the Urban Education Partnership Teacher Program and he's a former elementary classroom teacher in Toronto. Dr. Allen also makes himself available for mentorship in our Black Graduation Coach Program. On a regular basis, he provides learning opportunities directly with our Black students. And several times each year, he makes himself available to administrators and teachers in our system to teach us about Afrocentrism, culturally responsive pedagogy, Black history, and Black affirming curriculum. Dr. Allen, here, uh, Dr. Allen is here today to share his vision on how the Diaspora Conference can be a part of dismantling anti-Black racism in our district. Dr. Allen. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, Josh. <clears throat> I, I appreciate that. Yeah, um, uh, I want to also acknowledge that today is the second um, anniversary of the murder of George Floyd. Thanks for that, Leslie. And congratulations on the official launch of, of the Dismantling Strategies. Much appreciated uh, for your work, Tana and Yvette. I'm excited about the strategy because it will strengthen the work that we've already been doing. I want to speak to one of the highlights of my career and also speak to something that the Greater Essex County District School Board is doing well and has been for years. You, you, and you need to know that. Um, let me take this opportunity also first to acknowledge the many teachers and administrators who readily bring students to the Diaspora Conference every year. We couldn't have done it without you. So the African Diaspora Youth Conference was the vision of the late uh, Dr. Cecil Houston. He was a former Dean of the Faculty of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences. And for two days in May, we bring students on campus from Windsor, Toronto and Detroit to reimagine their future. Diaspora is almost in its 20th year. And when you think about it, it was way ahead of its time. We have been doing dismantling anti-Black racism work long before it was in vogue. Uh, so the original goal of the, the Diaspora Conference was to help young Black students realize that they could get to university and do well. 
it was uh, for them to understand the difference between a job and a career and how education impacted that choice. So also as a way to explore and expand their own limitations. We believe that all students can go to university despite uh, the messages that students are getting through the media, even from teachers and from other students, as been mentioned before. The conference continues to seek to attract and recruit students from working class communities or those who are first generation, and that's my passion, to go to university. And has created a space for dialogue with among students who are either interested or can identify with being part of the African diaspora. So the diaspora conference has been and will continue to be a part of our dismantling anti-Black racism strategy at the board. So I'm excited about that. And uh, we're looking to create dual credit courses, having more on-campus visits to get the students to get that first person experience at university, creating university pathways pro programs specifically for our students to offset those barriers that they face and to improve their life chances. We found that several of our students did not understand the possibilities available to them and lack the social connection to help them to see university as an option in their lives. Personally, for me, I can still remember the day in high school when the weatherman, <laughs> the local weatherman that I saw on television every night came to visit my school. It had a profound impact on me and made the connection between my schoolwork and my future for the very first time. So I know how important it is for our students to meet me as a professor. And so for the past 20 years, I've been in the schools regularly, working to help to demystify university, working with students to help to create black affirming spaces in our schools and with our graduation coach program for black students and our Create Your Future uh, advisors who promote university as a, as a pathway. The work being done is relational, it's deeply personal, it's building connection, connections or it's inspirational, it's sparking in my imagination and setting high standards. I wanna give a personal shout out to Natalie, to Amina, to, to Ronnie, Emily, Olivia, Xavier. I've come to know them really well. Um, last couple of weeks, the schools that I've been in, just the, the feeling and the excitement among the black students and hearing them talk um, and seeing the, con the connection that um, we've made. Uh, these folks are doing phenomenal work with those students in the school and I appreciate that. So also based on the feedback, we're getting a feedback from the diaspora conference a couple of weeks ago, 96% of the students who came to the conference reported that the conference was helpful in making, helping them make choices about university. And we're so proud to have uh, offered hundreds of thousands of dollars in scholarship <clears throat> for students to attend the University of Windsor for years and inspired generations of young people through intense learning experiences that encouraged them to see higher education as part of their goals. And I'm not sure if folks here know this, but for years now, Superintendent Canty, Houston, Howitt, and Director Kelly has given me an open access to all their schools and the board, so I don't even need permission to go into schools. I thank you for that because you know that I'm very task oriented and I believe that much of the work that we do in anti-black um, racism work happens on the front line and it happens with our students and you've placed me in those positions. So I want to thank you for that. So these dismantling strategies has opened up the range and scope of work that we continue to do in collaboration with Diaspora and I'm excited about that. I'm proud to be working in partnership with the board and I look forward to continued successes. So thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Allen, thank you for your legacy of work that you're doing in our schools and, and it is definitely a part of the work we need to continue to do. Um, and, and full disclosure, I have a daughter, uh, first year university at the University of Windsor. She went to two diaspora conferences and uh, this year she was able to uh, cash in her scholarship. So thank you again, Dr. Allen. Uh, now, uh, more important guests coming next. We've got two of our students coming. Uh, I want to explain a little bit about the Black Youth Empowerment Program uh, by YEP. Um, BIAP was formed just before the pandemic by a couple of our students who wanted to create a platform to celebrate and promote black excellence in our schools. A month ago, we went to the Sandwich Teen Action Group, STAG, hosted by John Elliott, uh, to attend BIAP's first in-person uh, event and the energy of the black youth um, in, in that building 
it was humbling and inspiring. Um, it's my honor at this time to welcome two of our students, Keishan Dow from Tecumseh Vista and LaDonia Gale from General Amherst, co-founders of BIEP, who will share their vision for black youth in our district. Keishan and LaDonia, please. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Tayshawn, and I would like to thank Josh Canty and all of the Greater Essex County uh, District School Board for having us today. Um, it's a great honor to be able to talk to you guys about BIOP and who we are and a little bit about of what we do. Um, so uh, the Black Youth Empire Program is partnered with the Sandwiching Action Group. Um, and uh, we are funded, we were funded by the Ontario Trillium. We uh, wrote a grant um, and at the ages of 12 and 13, uh, and we're both uh, 16 and I think 15 now. So um, we've came a long way and um, it's a youth led nonprofit and we'll get a little bit more into that in a minute. Okay, so BIAP was founded in 2019 by Tayshawn and I. Our moms originally were looking for a grant because they both worked for a nonprofit and they would find one for youth, so we decided to apply. So amongst the three of us, so there's me, the co-founder, Tayshawn, the other co-founder, and Elisa, who's our administrator, but she couldn't be here at this time. So a little about me. I am a grade 11 student at uh, Tecumseh Vista Secondary. Um, I'm an advocate for uh, against discrimination and the co-founder of the Black Youth Empower Empowerment Program, or BIOP. Um, I believe that youth that have, an, have a passion for anything can achieve their goals by working hard uh, and diligently. Uh, and working hard is a key component in becoming a leader or making change in their community. And a formal introduction, so I'm LaDonna Gale and I'm the other co-founder of the Black Youth Empowerment Program. My philosophy is excellence is the minimum standard and as a result, I have been influenced to become a leader in my community. I'm an advocate for change and this has inspired me to volunteer multiple youth, youth and community organizations across in Essex. Through my interface, I was discriminated against because of the color of my skin and my aptitude. I currently am one of the only black girls in my classes and I do not come in contact with many black teachers. And I've dealt with many forms of racism and racial prejudice and I've also seen youth in my community deal with it as well. So my aspirations to influence change have empowered me co-founding this noble organization. And over the past three years of this program, I've Biop has established networks with various community stakeholders to include youth and partnered organizations across New Jersey and by extension Ontario to continue to bring awareness to the prejudice and discrimination who are inspired by my story and what I do. So the inspiration has driven them to also want to make an impact in their community and to become a better version of themselves and rise to the level of excellence. So through the time of Biop, we have been able to gather experience in leadership development, entrepreneurship, and capacity building. Tayshan and I are both goal-driven and self-directed, and our voices of change come with lived experience, but acknowledging that the change we want to see comes with personal philosophy of excellence. So in 2019, uh, both me and LaDonia uh, both met before um, our mothers uh, found this grant. So a part of their job was to find grants for their work. Uh, and they saw this grant, we're like, hey, so we both have teenagers. What if they would want to do something like this? They introduced it to us. Uh, we loved the idea. So um, we started the grant writing process. Um, we moved to uh, the next stage uh, and finalized uh, our grant. And then we sent it off and we were approved. Um, we have been funded by YOF and OTF, so uh, the Youth Opportunities Fund uh, and Ontario Trillium. Um, our goal is to empower uh, youth between the ages of 12 to 19 to overcome racism and oppression. Um, so what we do is we teach um, workshops and we also do um, experiential uh, activities such as we do um, events such as our end of year summit, which we'll get into, um, and also such as open streets, um, the farmer's market, um, and also other events that we held such as our Easter that Easter egg hunt that happened um, on Easter. So as Tejhan said before, we do community events. So in alignment with our project plan, 
we go into Winter Essex and we deliver different workshops to different youth prog to different youth groups. And our program involves youth-led equity and empowerment initiatives. And our programs are led by the team of facilitators, which include me, Tia and Elisa. And we provide a safe space for youth from all ethnic backgrounds. So each month we partner with different youth organizations in Windsor and we deliver workshops based around leadership, entrepreneurship, racism, oppression, and many more. And these workshops educate youth on the topics you present about while having a fine engaging them in discussions. So attending these workshops have numerous benefits for youth as it helps them with their communication skills and they gain knowledge and give them a chance to network with other youth in the community. And one of the best parts is, so each youth who attended gained a $25 gift card courtesy of her group. And if the workshop was in person, we did provide food and other things. So, as Station also said, BIOP is heavily involved in the Windsor Essex community, whether it's speaking at meetings like this one or attending events across the community. And at these events, we educate youth about different topics, so much what we do in our workshop in a more fun and interactive way. So Tishon also said this, but one of the major events we attended was Open Street Windsor, where we taught youth about diversity, taught them how to play the Arabic drums and play games and made many connections. So we regularly attended the downtown Windsor Farmers Market, where we gave out swag items like t-shirts, pens, water bottles, books, and more. And the best part that all swag items were free and we gave them out and the community really enjoyed it. So besides community events, Spike has had multiple volunteer opportunities, which includes flyer handouts where we handed up thoughts about buyer in the community. And we had our volunteer events at Open Street where we played games, clean supplies, and handed out flyers to parents and guardians. So volunteer hours are given as a result of this, and we've been able to connect with many youth across the community. Moving on to one of the biggest events of the year for us uh, in terms of BIOP is our end of year summit. Um, we had well over 100 youth come out, um, all of them racialized who came and learned about racism uh, and learned from amazing guest speakers that we had. We had some students uh, from St. Joe's who talked about their experiences um, with racism. And you can tell from some of the reactions we had, which um, one of them was Issa. Uh, she actually started crying while she was presenting and she didn't, she didn't understand why uh, at, in the moment and then after that she was uh, after she started crying and realized I'm crying because I felt so heavily and I never thought how much this affected me and I suppressed it so much that at this point of me speaking to everyone about my experience I just like couldn't handle it anymore so you can just and throughout the audience too you can see how all of them really were so focused on what she was saying and really like resonated with, she, with what she said and also with our other guest speakers as well who are, who are also youth. All of them were very so keen and so driven to like listen and also ask questions um, and relate to what they were saying. Um, it was a great day. We gave them a bunch of swag at the end of the day. They got to learn um, many different things and met new people as well, new connections. Um, and that's pretty much it was a great event for a bunch of racialized youth to connect with each other and learn from each other and just learn new things. And that pretty much comes to the end of our presentation with just a basic overview of BIOT. So updates, events, volunteer opportunities, workshops, and more will be posted to our social media, which is on the screen now. And you connect with us on our social media by emailing us at biopwinsor.gmail.com or our website, which is biopwinsor.com. So once again, personally, I want to say thank you to Josh Kenzie and the GEC DSP for having us today. And we look forward to seeing how this will go out in the future. There you have it, uh, folks. Um, can you remember what you were doing between the ages of 13 and 16? Um, I was certainly not um, as um, as ambitious, um, as hardworking, and, and, and certainly not as intelligent as, as these two young presenters. Uh, Tayshawn and Ladanya, thank you for coming in and sharing the work you're doing. And we look forward um, to, to leaning upon you, our students, uh, as we work uh, to, to dismantle anti-black racism in our board. Our final presenter uh, this evening is a community advocate, a dedicated community member, 
who has also been in many of our schools uh, through the Arts Can Teach program, performing spoken word poetry and using drumming to reach our students and share his passions. Just a couple months ago, I had the honor of sitting on a panel to select the city's poet laureate and our city's inaugural multicultural storyteller. And the panel was blown away by the talent and passion of our next presenter. It's my great honor to welcome to our Dismantling Anti-Black Racism launch this evening, Windsor Essex County's very first multicultural storyteller, uh, TJ Travis. TJ, we are all yours. Peace, everybody. Peace. I, uh, I feel very blessed to be able to listen to uh, the statements that everybody made tonight. And uh, in, in, in following the, uh, the, the, the young revolutionaries is a tough act to follow. I brought, brought a drum and a piece of poetry today. I play this drum for the beautiful, powerful, melanated babies that I don't make at home, that were left behind, underestimated, misunderstood, miseducated. For the ones who were made to feel orphaned and without a home, for those of us who never knew home, for the ancestors beyond the stars, the stars and the ancestors who walked the earth. Some of those ancestors are in this meeting right now, presenting with us. Make no mistake, the avatars we occupy are driven by the ancestors that had their humanity stolen away, and they refuse to lay down, and so do we. I proceed, I would like to uh, wish a happy and blessed Africa Day to, uh, to all of you. The piece of poetry that I'm going to, the piece of poetry that I'm going to share with you today, it's dedicated to the hyper intelligent ancestors occupying and animating the bodies of our sweet, innocent children. They walk through this world of hate, anger, resentment, conditioned to believe that they are less than the universe in its entirety. This piece is dedicated to 13-year-old me, and many of you, I'm sure. See, I remember being punished for being curious, imaginative, even ignored, punished for asking questions that were too complex for our educators to answer. So what I did is I decided to take those thoughts, and those ideas, and I put them into a poem. And I left that poem between the pages of an old book. Tucked between the lines of a Marvin Gaye hook, I was inspired to take a fresh look at what I thought was a crumbling hood. What's going on? See, I taper my eyes to convalesce my perception, recollecting late nights on my childhood stoop. 
A dime bag of trees with blunt paper shoots, whiskey and water with earth, wind and fire. Ringing in my ears, reflecting on the reasons, the reasons that were here. See, I carried no worries about tomorrow. No time to give, no time to borrow, no time to bank in a rubber band bundle. We chipped away stone to expose the Ten Commandments of struggle. We sculpted the streets with the precision of Michelangelo, rattling the bird cages of Maya Angelou's flow. We move so slow, we root like trees. Purple hazed with our words, we turn the whole hood green. And this is not a dream. This is our reality. Afro-Indigenous kids from the hood, misunderstood, underestimated. Box, braids, and shades, celestially activated, spiritually and mentally elevated. Wrapped wise in the eyes of dope rhymes articulating. The lost scrolls of a 66 book collection. King James reimagining of Constantine's direction. See, we were wrapped wise in the guise of a holy trinity. We were 13. Going on infinity. Intoxicated on moon dust, starlight, and the illusion of gravity. A prodigy of the 33rd degree, hiding secret stories in my poems using masonry. Now count every third letter and every third word and learn the supreme mathematics of the galaxy and how it relates and relates to the omega root of everything. Godspeed in the twinkle of a vacuum. The wordplay will grab you, twist you into self-suspicion, and then save you. Jesus upon a cross. Absurd. Reciting revolutionary ballads never heard. He slurred the truest bars before he withdrew. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Is what I recollect from my childhood stoop. My face, young with heaven, bright with constellations, life slowly burning with the vinyl groove of Bob Marley's tongue, gallantly singing redemption songs to the black grief of Canada's Africville. Marcus Garvey's swan song, my future waving as a flag from a vanishing ghost ship, swallowed by the thirsty lips of the Atlantic. Humanity is manic, with two-way static, we're divine, but we're not, we're enlightened when we panic. See, the truth about us is we're not quite organic. We're much like the tools and the thoughts of a mechanic, building a weapon, preparing the world for an emergency landing. Reading the hieroglyphs stained in our blood, sleeping, not overstanding, parading our teeth like a pack of wolves, eating the dreams of gentle souls no older than the sun, solar waves upon the face of a Gatling gun. Busting atomic bodies on the belly of the universe, pulling the strings of Artemis Perse, the goddess of hunt, nature, and birth, and I'm burning the pages from the library in my head, resurrecting Christ from a white loaf of bread, feeding the infection with the conspiracy blend of Egyptian sand, holding time in the lines inside of my hands, hustling truth in the street like it's hot contraband. I am 13, going on infinity. See, I hold the entirety of your variety inside of me. I twist poetic verse to reverse the language of mediocrity. I slam unrehearsed the scrolls of Socrates, folding infinity times infinity into an isosceles. I give my genius away for free. It helps me to sleep upon the spikes of my poverty. Glasses. Piece back together Pangea with the scraps of an atlas. At last I've abandoned my mind like a YouTube guru, a self-parody of a Buddha shrine, an expanded notion of the absurd, intellectually endowed, socially unlearned, a cobblestone nerd, peeking through the drapes of manifest destiny. We were 13, going on infinity. to uh i'd like to thank y'all for for the uh, for the invitation to uh to share in this gathering today 
much gratitude to uh, to to the to the speakers. Much gratitude to uh, to 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 the progress you know that we that we get behind and never 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 blink an eye. You know, I uh, hope to continue to see y'all. Uh, peace, Ashe. TJ, I think we can all collectively say thank you. Uh, Madeline, I hope uh, my mic is on. I hope uh, I hope you all enjoyed that. Um, I, I'm blown away. Sometimes I think that I'm a poet and then I run into TJ and I realize that, uh, you know, leave it to the professionals. Uh, we're, we're blessed to have you here tonight, TJ. Thank you so much. Um, we would like to thank everyone for their participation and for joining us this evening. In particular, we'd like to thank our Black community members who contributed to the strategy and who, and who will continue to consult with us as we implement our dismantling anti-Black racism strategy. We encourage you all to go for, to our website. Madeline has uh, put up the, um, placed it on the screen. Um, the questions can be answered by going to D-A-R, uh, D-A, the dismantling anti-Black racism, D-A-B-R at publicboard.ca. We intend to be accountable for the implementation of this five-year strategy and for improving the opportunities and the outcomes for our black students and staff. The work is underway and together we look forward to dismantling anti-black racism in the Greater Essex County District School Board. Thank you everyone and good evening. I think we're just missing the sound as we look at the student artwork. We might have to get TJ to come back on. We're just missing the music. TJ, are you available? Hey, Travis, we appreciate the encore, my friend.
Once again, everyone have a great evening. Thank you, Mr. Travis for closing the show for us. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening.